It is good to be in the house of the Lord this day. Especially with everything that's going on around us right now, it's good to come together, to come together so that we can come before God and worship Him with Him this day. We do have a few announcements. Uh, Thunder Sunday is today, uh, so we do have a can back there next to the basket for the offering. There's a can back there for the Thunder Sunday offering. Uh, so remember, if you didn't drop it in our way again, you can drop something in our way out. And also, we had our the business part of Charge Conference, we had Thursday night. We only had a couple people there. But we got the business stuff done. Uh, so, and that was the Zoom, and then we, we were in the fellowship hall. Uh, but we will have kind of a visual network part of the, of the Charge Conference, which will be next Sunday at 6, the 15th at 6. And that will be with the district superintendent. So, you know, he'll be getting me on there with this one. Uh, and the new district administrator, and, we, and I think our new district lay leader, and they'll be talking to us about some things, and then also hearing uh, reports of the different pastors. So that'll be next Sunday, and I think, you know, in a, in a, we'll, we'll do that in the fellowship hall too, where we can space out in there, you know, and we'll have, we can rock the door open, you know, these are after the same things that we're doing in here. And you know, I think we can space out, and then we can leave the fellowship hall just closed up, uh, like we're doing in St. So, you know, do our, take care of our precautions and stuff. And, you know, hope you'll be there for that next week. Um, again, this one, like I said, this will be with the district superintendent. It'll be, still be via Zoom. Uh, we'll have that on there. Uh, also, the UMW has pecans available now. Uh, eight fifty dollars for a one-pound bag if you're interested in see beauty. Uh, and also, Ruth is having her surgery in the morning, so technically she's supposed to kind of be in isolation right now, so we kind of need to put a little around her and we'll be praying for her. Uh, for that, I know she's ready to get over the food office. So. Right. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? Justin, we, we're going to need to mow again.
this time, you know, we would like to recognize you know, our, our veterans. You know, this is a, you know, one of those things that's important, you know, one time of the year. You know, there's, uh, you know, it's having the, the opportunity, the privilege to go and come together this day. You know, all, all the freedoms that we experience, you know, all of them are because of those who have fought and died and fought, you know, fought and served, you know, all of those who are military, you know, those serving now, those who have served. So, with that in mind, we'd like to recognize our veterans, you know, from our lady to the church, uh, great angel in the Air Force, 1960 to 1965, Tony Caldwell, Army 1968 to 1971. Kelsey Broadway Dance Star, Lady 2011 to 2017. Gary Chunk Livingood, Army National Guard from 69 to 75. Jane Mike Osborne, Army 82nd Airborne Division from 60 to 63. Dee York Carroll, Army and National Guard, 62 to 68. And Thomas Stewart, Army, 1969 to 1971. Are there any others that you would like to recognize this morning? Uh, we do have a poem here. So our thanks to you for all you do. Defending our flag, the red, the white, and blue. As Americans, we know what freedom means. The joy, the peace, and the right to dream. Freedom we love, but it is not free. The sacrifice is great, and we give willingly. Our thoughts and prayers are with you today as you fight for freedom for far away. May God keep you safe in all that you do and bring you back home to those who love you. I suppose serving in Canada, uh, at home, I suppose serving now, and also for those who have served. You know, we are grateful that our freedom is not free. You know, you know, all the freedoms that we experience are because of those who have been willing to give of themselves. And I hope we never forget. All right. This time, as we move into our time of prayer this morning, are there any praises or thanksgivings that you would share with the church this morning? Uh, Have you seen God at work in your life this week? I was coming home Friday afternoon, and you know, we rode to the mountains a couple weeks ago to see the beauty of the leaves. But coming home Friday down 64, I started looking around, and it's like we're getting the beauty of the leaves right now. There's a lot of different beautiful colors out there. And I just thank God for the, the beauty that he paints for us every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, noticed that we, I know we've got a lot of leaves on the ground already here, but, uh, but there's some of the ones that have the trees that have leaves left on them are, you know, they're beautiful, red and yellow and all of them. Also, uh, Tim called me yesterday. He said he wouldn't be here this morning because they're at the beach. He said he might not be here, but he's here in spirit, and he's just thankful that God allowed him to take his family to the beach this, this weekend. Okay. So thankful he get away, but also pray for safe travels.
Who's he? I didn't know what the news. I mean, I didn't turn the news on. I think I looked at it just a couple times, you know, that evening. But uh, all this shows how divided our country really is. All right, that's one thing. And I know, you know, people on both sides crying corruption. You know what I'm saying? That there's things that are going on with them and me. And, you know, it's government. It's politics. There's always things going on that shouldn't be. Uh, but we really need to pray hard for our country right now. And, and just pray that God will be done. Yeah. But no matter who is the president, we know who the king is. And I ask for our Lord Jesus Christ. No matter who's in the White House, our king is Jesus. And he is the one that we serve. And he is the one that we hope for. So, and, so we do pray that he would help heal this land, but then use the church to do it. Because this, I mean, that's one thing we saw, and we're still seeing it, is that we need to get the country, we need to heal. And all that can only come from God. Once again, remember, through tomorrow, for surgery, are those who lift up for prayer? Jennifer also has the same thing coming up. I'm not sure when, but she has to have one. And um, we need to continue to pray uh, for those who are affected by drugs. Uh, it doesn't seem to get any better sometimes, but we just need to pray for those. And also, um, coming home from work, and you know, I work in a different spot now, but went to Walmart neighborhood market one day and I saw a tent out in the woods with a clothesline stretched out and it wasn't too much longer. I told Tony, I said, I, I saw somebody living in the woods in the tent and it wasn't much longer. It actually came out on Facebook that these people were living in a tent and you know, they were asking for blankets. They can't have a fire. Uh, they had permission to be there, I guess, through the end of the year. And then come to find out, supposedly, in those woods behind Dollar Tree and Walmart over there, there's a little tent city. And, you know, we sometimes forget to count our blessings. We forget to, to remember that we have roofs over our heads and a warm place to sleep. You know, it, it may not be the best, but we're not living in a tent where we can't have a fire and you know I told Tony even looking on Facebook somebody made the comment why don't we just give them a Thanksgiving dinner and I just you know that would be a wonderful thing if, if the community would come together and, and give those people uh, something to eat I mean I know a lot of times we look down our noses at people like that but sometimes they can't help what their circumstances are. And we need to remember that we are blessed and we need to share those blessings. Yeah, it seems like I, I remember, it seems like I remember a time when I would see tents come in there, where you would come off Business 85 towards, you know, towards that shopping center, or 54, and, but now I guess they're behind Walmart spreads out there. Right? Mm -hmm. you know, and that's, you know, for us, I mean, we've got a roof over our heads and we got food on the table, and you know, and it's uh, hard to imagine, you know, people who are having to live in, having to live in tents, you know, and not, don't have a home, don't have, you know, food and, you know, basic things that we take for granted. So we need to pray for them, and, you know, we quite assume that we know why they're there, but we don't. I mean, it might be somebody lost a job. Find something else. I mean, we never know. Uh, but all we can do is pray for them and try to help them out any you know, way we can. And, and just pray for God to move in their lives. And you also, we know that there's a lot of jobs out there that people are needing help. But even at that, 
when you have to have thousands of dollars just to be able to get into a rent house. I mean, you know, if you're going to pay rent, you're going to pay a deposit, and you're going to have to pay the first month's rent, and then you have to pay a light deposit, water deposit. It's hard to come up with that much money on, on what a lot of people, I mean, even going to Walmart making $11 an hour, it, you're not going to come up with that thousands of dollars right. overnight. Yeah, for somebody that is homeless, I mean, it's hard to be clean to go to a job. I mean, there's just so many things working against them at that point. You know, so, yeah, definitely need prayer. Anyone else? Gracious and almighty God, Lord, we come before you this day, Lord. Lord, we are grateful for all the ways that you have blessed us to this day. Lord, for all the things that we so often take for granted. Lord, that we have a roof over our heads and food on the table for a few dollars in our pocket. Lord, some gas in a vehicle so we can come here to worship your holy name. Lord, very simple things that make us among the richest people in this world. And yet sometimes we take that for granted, Lord. We forget how blessed we are. Lord, we want to take time this morning, Lord, just to say thank you. Lord, thank you for all your blessings, Lord. And Lord, help us to use those blessings to help be a blessing to others. Lord, we especially just say thank you for your love and your grace that are never ending. Lord, it doesn't matter who we are or what we've done, Lord. You never, ever turn your back on us, Lord. You never forsake us. Lord, you keep right on loving us. No matter how undeserving we are. 
Lord, you keep right on working in our lives and in this world. Lord, even when we might not see it, we know you are here. Lord, and right now, it just seems like things in our country and the world, Lord, it almost seems like things keep getting worse and worse. Things are going completely crazy. But, Lord, we know you are at work. We know you are moving. It might be in ways that we don't understand. Ways that we're not looking for. But we know you are here. You have promised that you would never leave us, never forsake us, Lord. And you have proven faithful to that over and over again. So, Lord, help us to see where you are working, Lord, and join you in that work. Lord, open our hearts, open our minds to see you. Lord, use us as you see fit, Lord, to reach out with your love and your grace. Lord, help the church truly stand up to be the church that you have called us to be. Lord, to help bring healing to this land. The only thing that will change it is your love, your grace. Lord Jesus, bring revival. Revive us in that we might truly serve you with everything we have. Lord, offer you your glory. Lord, it is all about you. And yeah, Lord, we just thank you and praise you, Lord, for all that you are, Lord, for all that you've done, Lord, for all you continue to do. And Lord, we pray now in the way that your Son and our Savior call us how to, by saying together, our Father, who are in heaven.
chapter to the fourth verse of the second chapter. I invite you to hear these words. The oracle, the burden of the prophet Habakkuk saw. Oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not listen? Or cry to you violence and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law becomes slack and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous. Therefore judgment comes forth perverted. Look at the nations and see. Be astonished. Be astounded. For a work is being done in your days that you would not believe if you were told. For I am raising the Chaldeans, that fairest and impetuous nation who march through the breadth of the earth to seize dwellings not their own. Dread and fearsome are they, and their justice and dignity proceed from themselves. Their horses are swift and their leopard for mincing the wolves at dusk. Their horses charge. Their horsemen come from far away, and they fly like an eagle, swift to devour. They all come for violence, but press. Faces pressing forward, they gather captives like sand. The kings they saw, the rulers they make sport, they laugh at every fortress and heap up earth to take it. And they sweep by like the wind, they transgress and become guilty. Their own might is their God. Are you not from the whole of the Lord, my God, my Holy One? You shall not die. O oh Lord, you have marked them for judgment, and you, O rock, have established them for punishment. Your eyes are too pure to behold evil, and you cannot look on wrongdoing. Why do you look on the treacherous and are silent when the wicked swallow those more righteous than they? You have made people like the fish of the sea, like crawling things that have no ruler. The enemy brings all of them up to the hook, he drags them out with his net. He gathers them in his saints, and he rejoices and exalts them, for he sacrifices to his men and makes offerings to the same. For by then his portion is lavish and his food is rich. Is he then to keep on emptying his bed and destroying nations without mercy? I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me. What he will answer concerning my complaint. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. Make it plain on tablets, so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tear you, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. It. Look at the crowd. Their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous. Live by their faith. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Yeah, I, when I was thinking about what to preach this week, yeah, I was thinking about it. And, I mean, we, things have been going crazy this year. I mean, it just seems like every which way you get turned, things have just been going crazy. I mean, I with the pandemic, with all the violence and the hatred that's been shown, and then this past week, and we know, I mean, I think that we've been the media's calling the election, but it ain't over yet. We know there's still challenges in the works and until he goes before the courts, nothing's over. It, it's crazy. What it showed me this week was just how divided we are as a nation. And people on both sides so certain that they're right. Oh, and, and people just putting down everybody that believes differently than they do. And that's wrong. We can't be doing it. Especially as Christians. We can't. But one of the things I think 
think we're doing is we are, we are putting too much faith in whoever's in the White House or whoever's in the Congress or whoever's in the Senate. We are putting too much faith in them and not enough in God alone. But as I've been looking at all of that, you know, and we want to just cry out so much and say, Lord, what is going on here? Wait. This year, uh, you know, there are just so many things we just want to ask God, why? Why are you letting all this happen? You know, sometimes we want to get mad at God. Don't we? We want to get mad at him. Say, why? With all this going on, why are you in Why are the wild? Why are those who are doing these things in a row? Why are they prospering? And it seems like for us we're trying, everything's going wrong. Well, that's what drew me to this Because that's exactly what the back was doing. The back is crying out to God. The back has lived in a time where you know people seem to be, you know. Coming back to God, they were, they were more they were more religious in that time. But there, he was looking around him, and people were just saying the right words, doing the right things. They were making their sacrifices and stuff, but their hearts had not changed. He was looking around him, and he was seeing the wickedness, in the hearts of his people, and it broke his heart. You know, seeing all the things that they are doing, all the wrong doing that's going on in the world around him. And then he cries out to God. And he gets, he gets he's kind of upset. I mean, sometimes when we read scripture, all we do is kind of flat and we don't put the much motion into it. He was yelling at God, I guarantee you. He said, Oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help? Or cry to you violence and you will not save. Why do you make me see wrong going and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me, strife and contention are out. That sound familiar? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. That sounds like the world we're living in, right? So the law becomes slack and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous, therefore justice comes forth for burden. He's saying to God, where are you? You see all this, Lord, why aren't you doing anything about it? That's exactly what he's doing. And then God answers him. But the answer that God gives him is not what the back of wants to hear. They have, he actually says that he's about to raise the Chaldeans, the Leo Babylonians under King Nebuchadnezzar. And they're going to come through and come. That's not what the back of wants to hear at all. He's like, they're even worse than we are. How can you let this happen? How can you use them? And he says, are you not from a woe, O Lord, my God, my holy Lord? You have marked them for judgment. O Lord, you have established them for punishment. Your eyes are too pure to behold evil. You cannot look on wrong doing. Why do you look on the treasures? And are silent when the wicked swallow those more righteous than them. He said, they're even worse than we are. He said, how can you do this? What's going on with you? And then he actually says, he says, I'm going to stand in my watch and station myself on the rampart. He says, I'm going to look at He said, I made my complaint before God and I'm going to wait till to do what he says. He's going. He's going. He said, "I know God's going to get you. He's got you." And God answers him. So the Lord answered me and said, "Write the vision. Make it plain on tablets, so that a runner can read it." Make it huge. So no matter how. 
end and it does not fly. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not.
out of my notes a minute, and this reminds me. It reminds me that even when I don't see how God is working, even when it looks like everything's going to come crashing down, that God is still here. And that I can praise you, no matter what's going on. I mean, and Habakkuk goes on and he, 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 you know, it says, What use of an idol was it as this maker has shaped the past image or future of lives? Or is maker trust in what has been made, but, but the product is only an idol that it must be? Alas, for you who take the wood, wake up the silent song, song rises up and teach. He is, let them know, let them have. And he says, But the Lord, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before me. And he says, the, and he says that the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. No matter what's going on, no matter how much violence, how much things are going crazy around us, the Lord is still in his holy temple. And there's still a the time to come. The day of the Lord is coming when all we make. Yeah. Back it says, though the fig tree does not blossom, no fruit is on the vine. Though the produce of the olive fails, in the fields there will no food. Though the flock is cut off from the fold, and there is no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will exalt in the God of my salvation. God, the Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer and makes me tread upon the heights. And I will rejoice in the Lord. You know, I, I can look back, I've been on my life, and so many times that I thought things were just going as wrong as they could go. And so many things that I just knew, I, I, I just didn't think I, I didn't think I'd ever get through. When it seemed like my whole world was crashing down around me. Even then God was with me. And God brought me through. And I know I'm not the only one in here that has gone through that. Or he may even be going through it right now. There are we go through those times in our lives. You know, and I know right now in this world, I mean, this, this country is as divided as I've ever seen. But it don't matter. We don't put our hope in all that. We put our hope in God. And if we let Him use us, if we keep our focus on Him, and we let him use us and let him bring a revival that God knows he's wanting to do. Y'all keep hearing me preach about it. You keep hearing me pray for revival. Else because I know God is trying to bring a revival right now. But it's got to start with us. We've got to let him start it here. And only me can we change this world? Only then can we really help heal our land. Help heal our country. Is when it starts right here. So as long as we stay focused on everything going on around us, it will never happen. We gotta put our focus on Him. And understand that God is still here, God is still working. Might not be in ways that we understand. It might not be in ways that we would ever expect. But God's keeping. And God will take care of us. God will carry us through. And I really believe that God's power is about to be manifested in this world in a very powerful way. I believe that with all my heart. I believe the Lord. I feel like we're right on the cusp of it. But 
is going to make us get down to work. We've got to do this thing. We're going to stop focusing on all of this. Everything out there. That's what it's going to take. And I don't know about you, but I really believe this world needs to change. And I want to do everything I can to help make that happen. I want God to really use me to help make that happen. I hope you do too. But it, I want you to know it doesn't matter what's going on in your world right now. It doesn't matter what's going on what, when it looks like everything's going wrong. You know, God is still here. God is still on the throne. And He will carry you through. And if you just let Him, you will see His power at work in your life. Amen. Thank you. 